So far we talked about global standardization. Why companies should standardize uh, performance management? Yeah, and there are some important reasons. And that's also why performance management is much more standardized than let's say recruitment or some other HR functions. But at the same time, there are also some uh, important reasons why we have some local adaptations. Yeah, so why should um, uh, multinational corporations localize performance management and how so? Uh, what would they localize? Yeah, first, uh, some general reasons why we have uh, localizations. Um, we can think of some external conditions. Uh, so that is outside uh, the organization and then also internal aspects that is, lies within the organization. So external con uh, conditions could be local economic circumstances. That's what I already mentioned before because the economies, they grow at different rates. Uh, we may have some general trends, global economic growth, but at the same time we have also disparities, high and low growth rates. And very simple, you have to adjust uh, the expectations uh, across countries in terms of performance management. If, it, if it's a high, grow, high growth market, 10% growth, if your subsidiary grows by 5%, that's poor performance because you underperform the market. Yeah? If, however, the, uh, the market uh, has a zero growth rate and you grow by 5%, this is a really excellent uh, uh, pros, uh, growth uh, within that market. Uh, so you need to adjust upward, downward. You can, all, of course, create some benchmarks, yeah, but again, then it also depends on what's the maturity level of that market, what is uh, then also the market structure. We talk also about competition. Market structure, if it's uh, maybe a duopoly, you have only two strong players. If you, if you operate in a foreign market, player one has 30%, player two has 28% and then the third largest has only 2% and so forth, it's extremely difficult to compete in such a market. Particularly if you want to compete on volume and so forth. Maybe you can enter that market pursuing some kind of niche strategy, but otherwise extremely difficult because then you have very, two very strong uh, competitors who, who own the market, it's difficult to enter and to gain market share there or it's a growing market because in that market no one has really sold some new kind of tools or vehicles, then if you enter it's very easy. So that was the case Volkswagen in China 30 years ago. Yeah, they could conquer the car market by storm very easily, no competition, high growth rates. Nowadays Volkswagen in China, if they grow they would be happier I guess. Yeah? Completely changed yeah? and that needs to be considered. It varies substantially across uh, countries and then also in terms of performance management needs to be adjusted. Competition also refers to internal competition uh, or labor market competition. Um, there can be uh, lots of highly qualified employees uh, and if you use performance management as a basis uh, for promotion, uh, if you have many highly capable people and who will be then promoted inside and also the way then they cooperate or compete can be very different uh, and also maybe culturally different. Uh, I remember we, uh, there was some implementation of SAP, uh, German software database in Korea and in, in uh, Japan and they were invited to Germany, the Korean and Japanese managers and they were being taught oh this is new this and that blah 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 you learn here and then they learned so many great things and then they were returned to their foreign subsidiaries in Japan and Korea and their task was now to teach local staff yeah, to transfer that knowledge. In Japan it worked okay. Yeah, so they did teach then their colleagues you know, how to do this and that. The Korean managers did not. Why did they not share their knowledge? Because they said, it's my knowledge. My knowledge, I'm very powerful. I can never be laid off because I'm the gatekeeper. I have this precious knowledge. I don't want to share. Why should I? It's my knowledge. It's my competitive advantage compared to the others. Yeah, and that's a problem then uh, if this competition leads to undesired behavior. And then in terms of performance management, what would you do? 
Incentives, yeah, that would be a punishment. I thought maybe someone would say, oh, it will be punished. Yeah, it doesn't help so much, but maybe incentives. Yeah, if then the employees share that knowledge, yeah, then they also get an extra bonus or they get payment. If not, they don't. Yeah, so that can be then included in performance management. Yeah, so competition, how the situation is in that market and so forth. Uh, demographics, uh, in terms of age difference, generational differences. Uh, sadly, this is, I'm not sure if it's universal or not, uh, but I mean, what they say to be, you are young people, young people learn a lot, yeah, and they're easy, they receive feedback, maybe they will change and so forth. Uh, older people, <laughs> not so much, yeah, or at least I, I hope my, you know, maybe I don't, should not say any personal, share any personal details, but you can imagine, have you tried to change your grandma? Grandma does this and that. Mm, grandma bakes this cake, but too much sugar. To tell your grandma, change your recipe, do this and that differently. Will grandma listen? Maybe not, yeah. yeah and we have also demographic difference across countries. Uh, in some countries, most developing nations, young, very young population. Germany, Japan, <laughs> old. They're old, yeah? We have our average uh, age of working population might be 44, 45. Yeah, you have many employees who are 50 and older or 60. They're not as receptive. Yeah? You introduce all, any kind of performance management. Will that change them? No. <laughs> yeah, anyway, they may think, oh yeah, I'm 55. I cannot be fired. I have job security. Why should I listen to this new performance management system? I don't care can't do much about it. Yeah? It's very difficult. Yeah? Whereas in other countries, you have a very young population, you have different labor market uh, regulation, you can easily let go people who are not performing. Yeah? And so it's very different. And so you need to make some adjustment because you can't use performance management as a tool to threaten people. Yeah? It's also not only to incentivize, it's also to threatening uh, people, to be fair and to name it by, by that it may not uh, work that purpose. So you need to find some other ways how to motivate. Then uh, we can think also of supporting infrastructure. Um, that would be, oh yeah, a good point here for supporting infrastructure. We can think of technology, artificial intelligence. Um, maybe, I'm not sure how you think about it. Um, performance management, uh, uses all kinds of information. Yeah, they gather information. Based on this information, you evaluate. You give scores uh, to employees, and based on scores, then you get bonus, promotion, or the opposite. Uh, then uh, you can use artificial intelligence. Yeah, you can analyze the emails. Well, with artificial intelligence, you can analyze all the emails, thousands of emails, uh, and then you can see how well this person responds to email, what kind of content, what kind of words that person use, on the internet, how active is that person, on this database, how active does this person contribute, how often was this person requested to fulfill a task, and so forth, and that all can be used. It's very neat, number-based, very objective, you may say. Yeah, and that can be an advantage. In some countries, in China, they use this. Yeah, and it's, some people even say in Germany, they say, oh, it's scary. They, they, they analyze my emails, how dare, yeah? and they analyze my internet account, and blah, blah, blah. And in Germany, probably not possible. Even though technically, possible. But legally, not. Yeah, because it's privacy huh, and this and that, and you always need agreement. So there are different opportunities. And for performance management, the usage of artificial intelligence, yeah, offers a lot of opportunities because you can gather more data, more information, because the idea of performance management is to gather as much information as possible to get a complete picture of the performance of a person. And based on that, you can have maybe a more objective rating of employees. Restrictions is another word in terms also of unions. Unions, I mean, they have a fair point because performance management is not only to provide bonus and incentives, it's also being used 
to single out poor low performers and eventually use it as a basis to fire them. So labor unions, of course, they try to protect employees and they put in constraints. Right? So meaning in some countries, companies cannot implement or, uh, some kinds of performance management systems because it's not possible. Unions will boycott. Yeah? And in Germany, we have co-determination, so meaning uh, such as AI and some other policies cannot be used uh, as, a, as a basis for performance management. And then, of course, we have national and local culture. We will talk about that anyway soon. And we also have internal conditions, why we have certain performance management or not. Large multinational corporations typically have a very sophisticated uh, performance management system in place because it's very important. Yeah, it, as we talked about, it's evaluation and developmental purposes. Uh, so it's a really important function of HR and is also being used as such. And large multinational corporations, they spend a lot of effort and energy into developing a sophisticated and fair uh, uh, system to the extent possible. That's also why many employees or job candidates in these really tight group-oriented, network-oriented uh, countries, they like to work for these large multinational corporations because these systems are relatively fair, at least compared to those systems that are purely based on the opinion of one manager, which we also have in some companies. In family-owned companies, it's still very common. The family owner says, mm, oh, I like this guy, this one, yeah, you will be promoted. Yeah, and or <laughs> my cousin, of course, <laughs> he will move up. Yeah, and that's not fair. Yeah? In particular, in some countries where this is really important, and then these large American Western multinational corporations can be very preferred by people, in particular those who do not have these personal connections, because then it's they're on uh, same level, uh, same opportunities. Um, in terms of structure, okay, that's already, I said, large companies, they uh, devote a lot uh, on, and there are some differences. And there, of course, there are also country differences. In terms of culture, there are some companies that have very strong organization culture. There are some American companies, McKinsey. They have very strong organization culture, and they have this up or out performance management system. Many other American consulting companies, investment banks, likewise. And they do this in America in Germany, and they also do this in Japan, yeah, where it's completely against the norm, but they still do it. Yeah, and they select carefully, and then they also try some ways how to counter then any regulatory uh, constraints uh, to implement uh, their performance management. And then, of course, also management factors. Yeah, in particular, in some cases where the family, ownership, top managers are very strong and influential, they set up their own system and decide, oh, uh, on their own. So one point here, uh, very clearly also, there may be uh, some adjustment necessary. Yeah, one of the main factors would be culture because of major cultural differences. Culture also then influences then performance management. Uh, and it may also happen in some countries that are one country, but there are still differences. Yeah, we have India, we have Switzerland, or um, some other countries that have very much cultural differences, even though there's just one country. Yeah, and then uh, managing uh, that not always easy. And let us look into here five dimensions or five cultural aspects where uh, uh, performance management is important or where it may make sense to make some kind of concessions or considerations. Let's give you one example. We have here Mr. Stevens, American boss, and Mr. Kim, a Korean employee. So the American boss realizes, oh, yeah, I made a mistake. I want some feedback. Sorry, I made a mistake. What should I have done? What would Mr. Kim say? Yeah. Direct confrontation. Yes, Mr. Stevens, you are stupid. You made a grave mistake. You should have done this, A, 1, B, C, blah, blah, and so forth. Is that the response? Maybe in some countries, yeah? Maybe in the US, even that they wouldn't be as harsh as I just was, but they would, yeah, blah, blah. But maybe he would just say, no, you didn't do a mistake, you're the boss. A boss cannot make a mistake, yeah? So that's also very nice. When I was a professor in Korea, 
No questions, no criticism. I'm always right. Yeah? <laughs> uh, anyway, so I'm now back in Germany, so, but also here. Germany also has a fairly high uh, power distance. Yeah? So that's here the point. In high power distance culture, you don't get very frank feedback from people lower level to higher level. And performance feedback uh, evaluations are typically manager subordinate. And yes, the, subordinate, the, the boss can criticize the subordinate, but the subordinate cannot criticize the boss. Very difficult. Yeah, or would not dare, uh, or if very carefully, or maybe only if completely drunk, uh, during, uh, drinking out and whatever, and then maybe he or she makes some comments. But otherwise, very difficult. And that's also a really a huge struggle for these companies, American companies, 360 degree feedback. Yeah, do this in Korea or in some other countries, also in South America. Doesn't work very well, yeah, because of power distance. We are also here, Mexico. Mexican employees complained about US expats' informal dress yeah, because they were somewhat informal, not wearing a suit, yeah, not wearing a necktie, and very friendly. Hey, how are you? No, that's not what they expect from a boss. They want more formal here, you know, wearing a suit, giving directions. Yeah? That makes it difficult yeah, in terms of performance management. So, Typically, we would recommend some kind of adjustment. It can go both ways. Yeah, both ways means the locals, they can learn. Yeah, you can teach them. Yeah, and that's also what companies do. And the boss can learn too. Yeah, so this mutually, on both sides, you can offer some training and some adjustment may be helpful. In, in which di direction, more or less adjustment, that also depends on corporate policies. Yeah, so in case of McKinsey, American ethnocentric uh, consulting company, the locals need to adjust. They will be se selected and then uh, they need to adjust if they uh, not already from the beginning. But also uh, the other way around, also the managers can adjust yeah, in, in that sense that they try to be maintaining somewhat more distance, respectful distance. And also they can already anticipate there will be not very much open uh, feedback. Uh, or if they would like to facilitate some feedback, they can maybe try to go around the circle, uh, beat around the bush and try to find someone else who can facilitate that feedback on behalf of them. Another aspect here uh, dimension would be masculinity, femininity or also gender egalitarianism. We have in masculine cultures, such as also includes Germany or US, yeah, we have preference for assessing bottom line performance, so sales, profits, and so forth. Very popular was management by objectives. Yeah, here, this is objective, you have to achieve this and that, yeah, and then we will we'll check on that, and you get uh, recognition, perform, pay for performance, base pay, and so forth. You do well, you get individual recognition of your performance. In feminine culture, yeah, where it's more also think of Scandinavia and some other countries. Um, there's a different way. Yeah? You would also try to look into other aspects. Yeah? Qualitative individual performance. You also look at interpersonal relationship, attitudes. Yes, they tried very hard, so that should be acknowledged and so forth. Yeah? And, and then maybe also in your appraisal and uh, op opportunities, you emphasize more development opportunities. You offer more training so that people can develop in that direction and so forth that would be more better aligned yeah, to incentivize. Another very important aspect would be collectivism or individualism. I think this is uh, maybe very obvious. If you have an individualistic culture such as America, US, one of the most individualistic culture, you would like uh, to set up the performance management system. You would mainly set individual goals. You have to achieve that. When you do this, you get this and that. Yeah? And also the performance evaluation. If you're in a group-oriented culture, again, take Mexico or Korea and so forth, it's not group-based, it's very often, uh, it's not individual-based, it's group-based or team-based yeah? or even section-based 
Yeah, and then you also proclaim more goals that uh, uh, go into that direction. And also, uh, then again, also incentives and so forth uh, target uh, the group level. And if you would like to seek uh, critical feedback, uh, then it's very important to first to establish some kind of trust, mutual relationships, yeah, frequently also off-site or off-work activities, and then also when seeking the discussion and also very uh, in a more, more trusting environment. So now let us talk about another aspect would be communication context. Very often we distinguish between high context, low context. Right? It's from Edward T. Hall from the 60s. Uh, high context is always, there's a lot of, you have to see the surroundings, what's around you, gestures, nonverbal behavior and so forth. And low context is, you have to listen to the words, you can read the words, and that's all what counts, and there's some kind of difference. Yeah, and it matters then what is the status of the speaker, the respondents, and how these words are being used, intonation, and so forth. Yeah, so there's a lot of other things, and body language, and that all is important. And that is particularly important in performance appraisal uh, uh, meetings, informal meetings. And I know myself, uh, even though I lived many years in Japan, I, I was brought up in Germany, so my face tells the truth. So I can say, uh, you did a very good job, but my face doesn't say that, and then it's really obvious yeah, that I'm not telling the complete truth and what you emphasize in these kind of communications. Yeah? And that's important then also trying to align that. You know? It's difficult then also in these communications to bring across your message. And here, this is particular for implications for performance management in high context cultures, if you are from a low context culture. So obviously, you would always try to have your performance uh, review in a high context setting. So obviously not in a, on telephone, not email. Maybe also you would avoid video conference. You try to meet in person yeah, in a more relaxed uh, or uh, private setting. Also, you will try to avoid yeah, this loud, direct, and oral, or any kind of ex excessive uh, gestures and so forth, trying to uh, keep more neutral. I think these are some of the key aspects yeah, in when conducting uh, uh, performance reviews in more high context cultures. Maybe one last uh, aspect here would be high control, low control culture. So in, it's also related to uncertain avoidance. Yeah, we talk about uncertain avoidance. So if you have an environment where you have high control, you try, you can control all what happens, um, or that's also the expectation, or versus low context culture, meaning yeah, whatever I do, it depends on the environment. I can't, I can't be held responsible for it. Yeah, there are different understandings of to what extent really they can shape the future, can shape uh, the consequences, and that can also be to some extent then trying to be incorporated in performance management, already setting goals, achieving goals and so forth. Uh, one recommendation here would be trying to find some alignment already from the very beginning by uh, when you set goals and then also in the performance evaluation, some kind of agreement. Yeah, because typically we have some kind of standard global uh, performance goals, management practice and so forth maybe some kind of local adjustment yeah, and make him also understand uh, then people who come from a different, maybe from a low context culture, uh, to some extent trying to incorporate the external uh, environment into the performance management, but at the same time also making understand the importance of performance management. Mm -hmm.